except in those days I could do it a little louder. Well, when I did, all the boys over there on the hill said, there's Ross, there's Ross, and they made a beeline around the lake. Morning campers, how many of you heard the rain last night? It's nice, wasn't it? I'm going to tell you a story this morning about a fellow that lived down in Dalton, Alabama. And this fella, what he does for a living is interesting in that he makes the tongues for a wagon. Now for those city boys out there who don't understand what a tongue on a wagon is, it's the wooden piece that fits right in between the two horses and it holds all the weight of the wagon. And that piece of wood has to be the strongest thing about that wagon or it's gonna break. Now this fella lives down in the plains. Lots of tall, straight trees all around him. He can go out his back door and cut a tree. And it'd be real easy to make it. I wouldn't take a million dollars for all my memory, not one million dollars. I start crying when I think about it. I mean, it was so awesome. This was like a, it was a haven for me. It's a haven away from all the chaos in my family and you just wanted to be here. And you now at the end of the five weeks as a camper, you didn't want to go home. No, I, I, I was telling Patty on the way up here, I, you know, some kids came to camp and got homesick. I went back home and I wanted to go back to camp. camp I wanted sick. to live here, yeah. 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 Well, I think the reason he does is because he knows, like most of us know, who've been around a good many years, that adversity is part of life and adversity brings out the best in us. Those trees that are up on top of that mountain have been through the, the wind and the snow and the ice. And if they've survived that, then you know they're tough. I'm always out for an adventure, and, and there are six kids behind me usually looking for the same. <laughs> and uh, I was one of those campers, and it was a treacherous horseback ride. Just around trees and food gullies, and I don't know how we made it back. And Bill, in his infinite wisdom and his way of coaching and all, he, he knew you know, that we were out there and trying to get back. And when I got to him on the phone, he said, well, just come on back to camp. Do you know how to get back? Yes, sir. I, I know where we are now, so we can come back over the mountain and, and we'll be back there as soon as we can. This is where it all took place, and this is where it all stays, right in the heart and in the mind. And every child should have that opportunity to have those summers. Kinship and nature. That's what Flint Lock Camps mean to me. And I'll probably use the rest of my life chasing this experience. In your life, uh, you're going to have adversity. You're going to be hit by the snow and the wind and the rain and tragedy. And how well you stand up to that determines what kind of a man you are. So when it does happen, and it'll happen to all of us, you remember, adversity is part of life and a necessary part of life to bring out the best in you. That's our thought for this moment.